Hello and welcome to a Q&A session brought to you by OctaFX, best forex trading broker Asia 2021 and of course Nigeria 2022 with over 10 years experience. My name is Nicolette Mashile, I'm also known as the Financial Bunny and my esteemed guest today is none other than Zimasa Vabaza who's a communications strategist and an entrepreneur. And we're going to go a little bit deep into the type of mindset you need to have to become the best money manager for your finances and to become a successful entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. So let's take a journey with and welcome Zimasa Fabaza. Zimasa, welcome to our QA sessions. Hi. Now, one of the things I always hear from Dave Ramsey is saving is for losers. Now, I know that's one thing that you kind of allude to. Allude to. So, talk yes. to me about that. A lot of times, people save for saving's sake mm -hmm. um, because they get scared into saving. You should put money away to invest. Even when you don't have money and you start generating it and you, you, you're probably breaking even, what you should be looking to do is that you should be looking to kind of have a plan as to when you have excess cash and where you would invest it to make more cash. Mm. So saving for saving's sake is, um, and I'm very contrarian in how I primarily look at things because I think sometimes uh, people will do something and say, you know, you should get like, um, you should get this product, you should get this thing that'll ensure you to do this thing when you should take that money and save it for yourself for that rainy day, but you have easier access to it than giving it to a, an institution that's going to make you go through so many hoops to even get that same money. So let's say, for instance, something as, as um, rudimentary as like uh, car insurance, right? So you insure your car, but you're going to give a thousand rand to... Uh, let's say, whatever insurance company. Yes, the simple and simplistic way of looking at it is to say, um, I'm going to give that 1,800 rand to this insurance company so in case something happens. Some people who are generally um, live very normal lives, right, will go three years without claiming. Like, that 1,800 rand that you could have, I'm not saying people shouldn't get insurance. I think you should look at your lifestyle, look at what it is and how you live, and see if paying 1,800 rand for this particular vehicle is actually something you should do or you should take that 1,800 rand and invest it every single month but have easier access to that cash than if you had to go through an insurance company. Mm. But okay, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm just thinking now, isn't that the premise of insurance is to, and I know insurance is just an example that yes. you are using, but the, the premise of, of insurance is to say, I might get into an accident and the insurer is saying, but not today. Right? 100%. Right? So, 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 so what then happens if somebody does get into an accident? And where, would that not be eating then into their so, so, investments, which they might not be able to access immediately either? So, so let's take a step back. What's, yeah, yeah. What's, there's uh, different, different types of investment. But before we get there, mm. let's, let's look at the insurance case again. What you actually need to understand about sort of like insurance is obviously it's like the 80-20 rule. It's mm. like the Pareto rule. Mm -hmm. They say that 20% of people will get into accidents where 80% are actually paying for that 20%. Absolutely. So, but they already give you a marker into how they rate you. Yes. Whereas if you looked at the average and you said, okay, how much insurance am I getting? And they say, for you, it's going to be 2.5 for your car. Because let's say they say high risk areas, Tandika, mm. see, uh, you drive at night, you whatever, it's lock garage, da, da, da. They already start to give you markers that you can place in your own life to say, I'm actually not that high risk, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. I drive to work, I drive back. Uh -huh. So if I'm not that high risk, why not take this money that I've got? And what is the likelihood of a ma massive accident happening? Because I think sometimes we, we as society like to hand off a lot of the responsibility of thinking about how we're going to fix situations yeah. to big corporates. And maybe institutionalization has assisted people to believe that that's what they should be doing because they market a lot. Yeah. They tell you it's fear marketing, right? It's maybe time you took a step back to look at what you really put your money into and if you get something out of it. So it's a case of opportunity cost. 100%. And, and, and if I didn't know you're an entrepreneur, now I know, <laughs> right? Because I feel like entrepreneurs always live on, on the absolute edge. It's like, this two up, I could yes. be using it to make more Something, money. Something, yes. Yeah, and I think that's your belief, is yes. that money has to make more money. It has to be working, and you have to be chasing it. There's no such thing as passive. Like, I think people like this thing of saying that this, you should look at passive income. What is passive? Does it, does it, you're basically handing off whatever capital you've got to somebody else to actively manage. So you're not really passive. Maybe you are passive, yeah. but at the same time, somebody else is you're passively going to make profits on it. Yeah. But if you're active in your money, mm. you're going to make more because you're actively involved in it. I just, I feel like people hand off a lot of their financial responsibilities to institutions and financial advisors, and they're not actively involved. Yes, we're all not going to be people that understand how this thing works all the time, mm. but I think we should 
educate ourselves, mm -hmm. right, to know a little bit more and to get more involved mm -hmm. and to start moving away from being passive investors. Mm. And one of the things that I know that you believe in is to use debt to gain assets and not living expenses. Yes. So you can leverage in trading. Yes. But talk to me about using debt to gain assets. So, so what's, what's quite interesting about that is that if you're buying or, or, or leveraging debt to buy or get stuff that is a living expense, you're then putting yourself in debt. Mm. But if you, are, if you are borrowing to leverage the debt to get into assets that can generate something for you, then you are using debt properly. That is how everyone else, that's how institutions build, right? A simple thing. Elon Musk bought Twitter, right? Mm. He did not take out 40-something billion yeah. dollars. Mm. He leveraged Debt. Mm. He went, he said, I'm going to take out a little bit of money, and then you guys are going to give me money, which is debt to mm. him, and then I'm going to buy this asset and I think I can turn it around. Mm. That's how the big guys are doing it. That's how the richest man in the on the on this planet is doing it, right? Mm. So why are you not taking what the rich are doing and putting it into yourself? So for instance, a simple, simple example. You want to buy a car. Right? Yes, we're going to, I don't want to get into whether a car is an asset or not. <laughs> but, but, okay. you could be a guy that decides I want to buy an SUV, or you could be a guy that says I want to buy myself a double cab. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You get a similar thing, but on the Saturday when you're chilling, your double cab is moving people's furniture around yes. and it's making you money. Yes. It starts to become an asset, right? Yes. So, mm. and a double cab bucky can work on weekends, it mm. can do stuff. Mm. There's a lot of things that it can actually generate for you, mm. right? Mm. And that for me is what you leverage off, mm. right? Whereas you say, I want a really fancy car, mm. right? I want, I want a Beamer, I want a whatnot. Mm. Why don't you say to yourself, let me just take a step back and get myself a food trailer mm. and get into a business mm. that I can sustain. But here's the thing though, yes. and, and, and I, like, I like that way of thinking, but here's the problem. Yes. The problem is obviously one credit, credit education in yes. this country is yeah, non-existent, yeah. Very low. right? Um, secondly, Banks generally don't fund those things. And yes. I, I had a big fight, in fact, with having a, a conversation at a pension summit. And yeah. I said, because um, one of the things that the young people were fighting for is to be able to have partial withdrawals from their pensions. Yes. Because they're saying, I want to buy a house. Yes. But when I go to the bank, the bank, and I mean, this is up in Africa, yeah. they're charging me 30% interest rate. Yes. Whereas I can just get my money from my pension. Yes. So then another guy said, okay, but what, what if we want to buy shares? Yeah. Why is there no credit facility yeah. for me? I can go take out a home loan yes. and take out a car loan, yes. but I can't take out a shares loan. Yes. Why? And that's my problem is that we understand that mentality. Are we then saying that the banking system then wants to keep you in a space where you, it is, it you is are consuming credit? It is restrictive. I, I actually, I, I appreciate this question. I would say post sort of like Bretton Woods and the, 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 how we built this global system that we live in and, and, and find ourselves in, we, we have to understand that everything cascaded down. Mm -hmm. So from that system, the Bretton Woods said, okay, cool, we're going to have reserve banks all over the world. Mm -hmm. Those banks will give to your banks, and those banks create criteria to give to, to mm -hmm. institutions and mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. We must deconstruct this thing of access to capital relative to what people need to do and how they want to leverage it. On the probability of averages, most people are going to get it wrong. Yeah. But there's a subset of people that are going to get it right, and they could actually create more for others. So... That's where the, I'd say the, the banks have suppressed mutual savings, like stock fails, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They create an opportunity for people to pool resources together. Mm. But the problem is that you've got a, a lot of people who even in that thing are not as educated to understand what it is they can do with, the, with that yeah. money, yeah, yeah. right? Because those same people could go get themselves an NCR, National credit regulation mm -hmm. certificate and start to earn money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. People don't actually understand that, that mm -hmm. your stock fell doesn't have to chill, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Societies and communities need to kind of take a step back and they need to say to themselves, what if we help that farmer? Yeah. What if we help that farmer plant? Yeah. Because we already buy from him. Yeah. There's already a circular economy that's been created in the space. Mm. So how do we get there? And mm. even, for, even for people that want to kind of like trade and whatnot, mm. they, have, they don't have access to capital and that's where you were, you were speaking about the fact that, like, I always look at it and say, if you're going to trade, right, mm. you have to look at what amount of capital would I need to put in to get the returns that would make me feel like my trading was worth it. Yes. yes. A lot of people don't actually get that. Yeah. If, if a thousand rand return a day is not good enough for you, then you're going gonna to feel like trading doesn't make sense for yeah. you. But if, if you say to yourself, a thousand rand is a lot of money, but wait, wait, hold on. How much money do I need to put in to get that 0 0.2, 0.5% mm. return per day for me to feel like 
actually that thousand rand makes sense. Mm, mm. And that's the tricky thing. That's mm. where people kind of kind of get it uh, twisted. You know, speaking about institutions having, you know, a desk that really gives them information, mm. I, I think it's one of the things I like about the OctaFX trading app. Yeah. So what they've got is on their site, they actually have indicators that okay. give you that information, that information immediately. You know what I mean? So you will know how to actually position your trades so yeah. that it's not too much of a speculation. Yes. You know? And I think that's what I wanted us to circle back to. And I think for, for interest sake, like that information is so crucial because if you're getting information quickly that is reliable and information that's actionable you can then make better trades. Yes, no, yeah. definitely, definitely. Now, I, I think for me, what's also quite key is the fact that you want a user-friendly app to yes. be able to trade on. And the one thing that I, I think for me works is that once you actually start familiarizing yourself, they've got a demo account. Yeah. So you can start off with a demo account. Yes. Before you actually and make see real if trade. you can actually, can Lala, actually trade. it's important, eh? <laughs> <laughs> especially if it's your money. No. I go. Talk to me about your money crutch. You, 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 you speak a lot about people need to acknowledge their money crutches because we are still all human. Yes. What would you say is yours? It's 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 technology. It's technology. I buy I buy a lot of things that I'm fascinated by a lot of things. I think because I'm a I'm a person who likes to kind of uh, experiment a lot. I. I would even buy like a, a broken drone mm. and try to fix it. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm weird like that. So I know that tech, tech um, is a big thing for me, but I've put in checks and balances for myself. Mm. So I told myself that I would never buy tech because I understand tech really well. I would never buy a brand new product oh. because I understand it's the engine that exists inside the tech Everything that else I need. Is just... It's aesthetic and, yeah. and marketing, yeah. right? Yeah. So you want to get the latest, the latest iPhone. Yeah. That's good, but the engine of the old one is still really good. And a lot of people buy for the aesthetic so that they can show their friends and whatnot. Yeah. So I said, if I know I've got a crutch, why not get the engine? Because the engine of, this, of, of the 13 is just as, as good as the one of the 14. All they've done is just software upgrades. Oh. So understanding at a deeper level your crutch, this is just an example of how I understand my crutch. Yeah. And, but for other people, it's bags. Yeah. For other people, it's clothing. For other people, it's cars, yeah. right? But you... As the deeper you go, you, the awareness of your crutch relative yeah. to your money makes it easier for you to make decisions knowing that this is a crutch purchase. This is a purchase that I'm going to make stupidly, but how do I mitigate a lot of the stupidity in that decision? But now, uh, going back to the psychology now, it's, it's more than just it being a crutch. It's, the crutch is not necessarily the thing. The crutch is what you, how it makes you feel. Because if you say somebody, for instance, let's use your tech example. Yeah. I'm buying the latest phone yes. for the aesthetics. Yes. And it's for what I'm going to be perceived as. Yes. So then I've got a bigger issue here. It's a character issue. Yeah, then it's, it's not, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, 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 but remember that a lot of things fit into what a crutch is, yeah. right? It could be, it could be uh, something that is a legacy for you. Yeah, Maybe yeah. You have, a lot of people have a thing with shoes, right? Yes, yes. Purely because they never had shoes growing up. Yeah. So the, you're but not gonna run I away, just, you're not gonna run away from yes, that. Yes. You never had shoes growing up, yeah. right? Yeah. So to you, you never have enough shoes. Yeah. I would rather somebody says, I want to make this purchase decision and I'm fully aware of it, and I know all the risks mm. uh, involved, almost similar to, to, to trading, right? Mm. You, you know all of the risks involved, and you're making a conscious decision mm. to get into trading, mm. but you realize and understand that there are risks, that your capital is at risk. Mm. But if you're aware, you can actually use those known deficiencies in how you think to win. All right. Very interesting conversation we're having with Zima Zavabazai. I mean, I, I'm learning quite a lot. I think one of the biggest things was safety, revenue. What exactly are you thinking about right now? As you're watching this show, what are some of the things that you've taken from our conversation? We're going to take a break. When we come back, we put Zimasa's financial literacy to the test. The OctaFX trading app is a smart trading service combining everything a trader needs in an easy to use thing and enjoy. By the way, use my promo code Nicolette and double your deposit for more profitable trading. Welcome back to the Q&A sessions brought to you by Okta FX. We've had such an exceptional conversation with Zimasa Vabaza, and I think now we want to test his financial literacy and see where exactly Hectic. is he <laughs> in terms of financial concepts. Of course, we are playing save or spend. Are you ready, Zimasa? We're going to start um, off easy. I, I don't know. With general. I'm, I'm okay, cool. Okay, go. 
Uh, the it's it's direct marketing. Our mothers love selling it. MLM. No, the Tupperware. container. Yes. Okay. What do they deduct from you as an employee so that when you are out of work, you are yes. Okay. What fifteen percent? Uh, VAT. Okay. Richest uh, 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 family down in Stellenbosch. What rich family? There's a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in Stellenbosch, there's a lot of rich. Give families. me the one. Yo, I thought of like group, uh, Rupert the other Oppenheimer. One. Yes, that one. When you don't pay SARS, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Do okay. you want to go? I would try because what the hell, dude? <laughs> go. Uh, okay, gold, silver, platinum. What, what are they Metals. called? Commodities. No, no, no. But it's, uh, oh my goodness, this is going to be so bad. Big black woman from America. She used to act. What? what Precious metals? metals. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it's not silver, it's what? Gold. Um, okay, when you make sure you don't lose money in trading, what is it called? Stop loss. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think that's Sorry, that's will proper. you explain precious metals as what? There's a big black woman <laughs> who used to act, in, but you got it, so. <laughs> you are good. Just take it, take it, take thank the you. win. Thank you were really, take. really good. And thank, thank you, you very much for being with us today. It's a pleasure. I think we've learned quite a lot from you. And I think our way of thinking is also changed. And of course, it's, it's not just for us who are sitting in this room, yeah. it's also for the people that are watching. So really much appreciate it. 100%. And all the work that you do. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. on that. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much for watching our Q&A sessions. And we hope that there's something that you have learned right here today. If you're interested in learning more about Forex trading, OctaFX on their website have a free basics beginners video course where you learn all things about Forex trading. If you want to know more or you want to start a trading, you can use my promo code, which is Nicolette to double your deposit for a more profitable trade. Once again, my name is Nicolette Mashile, also known as The Financial Bunny. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. For a 100% bonus that doubles your deposit for a more profitable trade, use promo code Nicolette.